Alrighty, welcome back. It's Friday, and I'm on air, and I'm Bad Chad, your man. And uh, this is what we're going to do today. Um, what's going on today is we got we had the Fiero, we primed it. Uh, I show you how we sanded it. We primed it, um, and we let it set out in the oven for a couple for a day or so. And the oven is the outdoors. We turned it up to about 85 degrees yesterday. It was nice out yesterday. It was beautiful. But what I want to show you right now, after you primed your car and you look at and you're looking at places and you see that you have a few things you have to fix. If Jolene comes over right here, I'm not sure if you can see it very well or not. I'll get a light and put it on my head. I'll put a light on my head. We get these from Jack. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jack. Um, you can see a spot like that. A spot like that. A little spot like that. Try to sand that off. Um, a little spot in the corner where the paint had a crack and it chipped off. Just give a little sand there, trying to get that dealt with. Uh, we have a little few little picks up here like that. Um, it's all normal stuff. Um, this car had an, had, has had an issue with different coats of paint being put on it and not being sanded. I'm, that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that. We got a couple little chips here. We've got a chip down there. We've got a, little, a few little odds and ends over here that's not feathered out very well. And what, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it before you paint it. We're in primer right now. There's been no sanding going on. It's been primed with a polyester primer. It has, it has hardener in it, so the, the, the primer is really hard. Uh, you would not do this process with a lacquer primer. Do not put filler over top of lacquer primer. It does not stick. With this polyester two-part primer, uh, I find that the filler sticks maybe even a little bit better than it would stick as if you didn't have it. So I'm just going to mix up a little tiny bit, and the reason I'm going to mix up a little tiny bit because it's hard to uh, put that much on in that short amount of time. Um, but I'm going to go over the car. I did not guide coat anything yet, and the reason I did not guide coat it because once you guide coat it, you cannot see anything. And if you do not know what a guide coat is, you stick with me, and I'll show you. But basically, I'm going to go around and touch all these places that have this. Got a nick going on there. Got a couple nicks going on there. All them places will be magnified if I do not get them now before we paint. Um, they'll be magnified, and you'll see them. Basically. So what I'm saying is, after you prime your car, if you see any bad spots, do not fret. Grab yourself some filler, some two-part putty, whatever you desire, and uh, go fill them spots. Wait th for them to dry nice, and then buff them off. And what I mean by buff them off is sand. I might have put a little f too much filler in that, or hardener, I'm sorry. Sometimes I say things that I'm not meaning to say. I'm going to start over here because I have some pinholes. You can see I've got some pinner holes on this side, the piece I fixed. It was broke, and I got some pinholes, and I want to put a thin layer of filler. Nothing really to fill and make uh, hard to sand. I just want to put some filler on it so you can almost see through it to get the places that I need that make me happy. It's not bad. Not bad. Now see this is what I mean by when you start mixing this stuff up and you haven't you're not ready for it. But I'm gonna go up here and uh, I've got a few spots. One here by the headlight. Just want to put enough on to cover what's going on. I don't want to make anything straight, I just want to fill it. This headlight is very scratched up. And I'll call it, not scratched up, I would call it weather check probably. And uh, we'll put some, a little bit more meat on it. Now I have a couple scratches down here in the front bumper. You can see there like that. I'm going to slide that on there. Hopefully I'm going to take the That'll stay there. I've heard some people do it with a razor blade. The only reason I don't like doing it with a razor blade is because come time it digs in, and uh, I don't like that. I don't like it. 
you know, on as thin as possible. Hood's checked quite heavily. And I will show you how checked it is when we guide coat it and sand it. You will see how checked it really is. And what I mean by checked is that the weather has gotten to it and uh, it has cracked the surface a little bit. I'm getting hard. I'm going to throw this away. Getting spongy. So that is thin, 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 thin. But uh, where, where it's checked so bad, I want something a little thicker to cover up um, what's going on there. Um, because when I sand it, I probably won't have enough product to make it look right. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up some more and keep going around the old car and try to get all the places that I can see. Um, that's basically what you do. And uh, so I've only ever, so I've only done, only done uh, it one time so far. I've just kind of gone over it once. This is the first time priming it. I'm hoping I'm not going to have to prime it again. I'm just going to probably seal it before we paint it. And that'll be good because we're not using the filler to make something straight. We're not going to have no pinholes in the filler that we're putting on. It's too thin for pinholes. The only pinholes we're going to have is the ones we miss. Got a little spot here. Better if you get your fingers into it or not, as long as you get your spot covered. I'm gonna smooth it out some. Now I know I got some spots up here, and that's where I'm going. Got spots right here. And the hard spot, basically the hardest thing about doing this is getting it in the hole. Basically. Just swiping it a couple times. I don't want to put too much on. Just trying to get the best job I can. Every pick, every spot that has a, a boo-boo you should try to get it, just so it'll look better. Look better on the paint job. Put a little tape on that, so I did not get any on the fender. I'm not, I don't want to sand on the fender. I want to sand on the, on the bumper. Get a little extra on that, because it's quite a chunk of Quite a chuck and paint out of it, it really is. A little better job that time. Spot there. Small batches, and that's the proof in the pudding right there because it's starting to go hard on me already. Stop it. Stop it. She goes hard on me. Just like that. Small batches when you do stuff like this. Jolene looks fantastic today. Well, we went down to the to the building where we have our cars. And uh, there's not a sign of life in one, one battery. Wow. <laughs> hard, it's hard to believe, you know. We've got a couple cars. You could leave them set all year long, over and over and over. Turn the key, works perfect. Buy a brand new battery, set it in a car, leave it for a year to go to turn, dead as a net. Try to get it back up on charge. Terrible, absolutely terrible. 
put a little bit on this time. Try not to let it get hard. Probably went, I should, took, should have taken a look around to see if there's any more places. And I, I don't mind, even if you primed your car and, and did the filler work over top of the primer, works fantastic. I, I find that the, that the body fill sticks really good on top of the primer, the polyester primer that is. The lacquer primer is a different story. There's, a, there's no good things happening there, that's for sure. Body fill over top of lacquer primer does not work. There. Yeah, I've got a little spot up in here. I'm going to put it on my finger because it's like that. You can see a little spot right there. I don't know if that was a smart thing to do, but I did it. You see a little a bad spot right there, a real bad spot. We're gonna go with that. Some spots are hard to see. Thing that's got a crack in it. It's hitting it with a little bit of filler. going on there to get it all sanded out so put a little filler in it off to another batch get a little bit's gone hard on me I will probably sand, sometimes I've, I've sanded it off with an 80 grit. Um, made a mistake a few times doing that, not getting it good enough. So I'll sand all this filler off, just, it's just a skim of it. I'll sand it all off with a 220. A 220, not trying to make anything straight, just trying to fill the pit or the scratch. Just gonna take a look it over for a minute. Got a, something like that. Got to put something in it. Got some paint lifting over here. Got to sand that off. <laughs> uh, she's a she's a doozy. Got a scratch like this here. Got to put some in it. See that? What's that? Oh yeah, right there. So basically, we're just going to go over the whole thing and try to get all the scratches that we can and try not to miss anything. And if we miss something, you know who we blame. Right there. Looks like one right there. We did some repair work on the roof. It doesn't look bad. I'm thinking that the primer's gonna take it. So do your body work, 40, 80, get it in primer, and then, then, then you'll be able to see what it looks like. 
it's hard to do. I, I find, for me, I find it's hard to do um, right down to the very end. Like, you know, I'm, we're not doing collision work where you try to get it as perfect as possible, prime it, sand it, paint it. Not, not doing that because basically um, I'm not fixing dents. If, you, if I was fixing a few dents or fixing one area and it was concentrated and I was just doing that one spot, great. But on these cars where you're doing the whole car, uh, where we're doing the whole car you want to it, it takes a little bit more than just doing it once uh, so that's why i like to do 40 80 and get it into primer and then you can and then you can go around and check on it a little bit to to you know just just do it once do the do the body fill and and then prime it and paint it uh, i find it too hard to be able to get it all looking the best it can be because there's too much there's too much area that you're covering or i find so what i like to do is just get your primer rocking on it as quick as possible and that way there you can really take a look at it you can really see where you're at with everything uh, if you do not well then then you're I find it takes forever too to be honest with you to do it you know if, as I'm looking at that Jaguar over there to do all the body work on that and have it perfect before I prime it, do the do putty it and everything like that, go over it and block it. That means I'd be doing it three and four times. I find it's just easier to. Jolene's helping me. A little spot there. We're putting that stuff on just as thin as possible and making sure they're trying to get everything. I don't know if I got everything or not, if I'm missing or what I'm doing. I don't know yet. And yes, there is a difference between doing collision work and doing this. Big difference. If you see anything, baby, let me know, will you? Let me know. And the reason being is the better. Oh, for that now, would you? She just stayed out of it. Oh. And for me, this is how I feel. If you're, if you're doing a car like that and you're trying to get it perfect the first time and then prime it, going down to 220, whatever, and then priming it and trying to make it perfect. So remember, you're not only doing the filler blocking all out, then you're doing all in putty and then blocking it all out. It just seems to be too much to do at once for me. I like to, I like to prime it and then to see where I'm at. So that's why I always say 40, 80, and then prime it. Give yourself a chance to step back and to see what it looks like. We're hired again. Doesn't take long for little batches. I'll sand one of these off to show you how I'm going to do it. And that way there you'll know how to do it. If you want to do it this way, it's entirely up to you. Entirely up to you. So I have all the little picks, I think, filled out. I generally do not buy putty, or I don't buy putty, the two-part putty. I generally just use the filler. I'm using the Z-grip on these little tiny hole, these little pinholes and stuff. The reason I'm using the Z-grip because it's a little, it's just a little finer body fill. And if I wanted to thin it down a little bit more, I could put some fiber or polyester resin in it. I could put some of that in it and, look, and smooth it down. You can do the exact same thing with filler as you do with the fiberglass if you want to. Let's, you know. Do the exact same thing with that if you want to. 
So basically what I'm doing is just running around making sure I'm taking a look. Everything's okay. I'm going to grab a block with some 220 on it. I'm just going to use a piece of this for now just because it make it easier for me. This thing hanging off my head. Thanks, Jolene. That was a help. So I'm just going to pull this off. Piece 220. And I'm going to buff these pots off. I think that's one of the first ones I did, is it not? I can start wherever it's dry, would be the best place to start. I'm going to start here. It's, it's a bit, it's damp. Basically, all I'm doing is, is, is going down till the picks are gone. Wipe the, it's a bit wet. Coming off easy though. Just want to use a block because I want it to come out flat. Chunking up on me, it's not that hard yet. Just gonna switch it and go the other way. Didn't put a whole lot of primer on the car. Try not to use a bunch of product. All right, now you can see the pick. You see it right there. Right, haven't taken a whole lot of primer off. Kind of buff that edge there. Not hurting it any, I suppose. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and try to leave all that like that. So it's got the pick there. As I'm sanding that, I found another one right there. <laughs> and that's how it goes. Just keep walking around, make sure you get them all. That was done at the same time. We might as well get that one in the corner of the... Might as well do this one too. It's right there. Why would we not? I want my glasses, my spectacles. Wouldn't use a block on something round. And it doesn't make sense to use something flat and straight on something round, but do as you please. Right there. All right. There's our there's our hole filled. Happy with that. And basically that was going on. We'll we'll do a little bit. We'll do this here. That I think I hit that first. I think I did or not. I did. So I'll just put a. I am getting, um, I'm using the wrong, actually showing what you shouldn't be doing. It's up to you if you want to, it's just more expensive. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I should not be using the six inch uh, 
uh, DA paper for doing this. I should grab the, I'm going to actually grab a piece right after this piece, I'll show you. This is just more expensive, that's all. And uh, I'll, I'll grab some paper and show you and put it on a block. There's a different kind of block you can use to make it cheaper on yourself. Hopefully we've just got this on thin enough that we can just it just comes off good. And there's no big damage to the primer. Just filling in the spots. Basically, I could do it with a DA and I probably might. It's not for everybody, but it's the way I generally do it. You can see it's kind of wet still. You can see how the body fills filling in the pinholes there. See how it's filling in there? Not even to the primer yet. It's quite thin. I'm going to grab the other paper. That's an expensive way to do it is to take rolls of paper like that and stick it onto a pad. Your cheap, your, not your cheapest, but your most reasonable way. Your most reasonable way is to have a block like this. Ouch. It's got teeth in it and it bit me. I've got a piece of paper on here that's sticky. Generally not for that. Okay, so this is the block that generally you use, just a little cheaper. It's got a little teeth in there, so it bites you like that. This is a piece of paper, fold it in half. The lengthways, fold it in half. Bum, bum, bum. I'm just gonna cut it with scissors, make it easier on myself. So I'll cut it like a pair of scissors. Then these cut in half again. You can stick it in there uh, like that and, and flop it over and do each one. But now we have a piece of paper for our block. Way you might use it. Want to get down as tight as possible. That's probably your probably your most reasonable way to do it. Instead of grabbing those, just like that. That's just being lazy. You can see that the the filler is wet or still not cured all the way because it's gumming up on the paper. So that's why I went to this because that way there, I give a little more time to dry. And it's probably the best way to. You know, use your material. You start saying, "Well, Ben Chan told me to grab the DA paper," and it might not be the way, might not be the thing to do, eh? Um, just... You can put that on those. They're so thin that that filler will stick in. The, or the orange peel of the primer. That's how thin you can put that on there. And I can show you right there. You can see where it's standing, sitting in the scratches and where it's lying in the, in the, in the filler. That's, that's body fill in, on the orange peel of the, of the primer. Hard to believe, I know. You can get it on there that thin, but you can. I might do things different than you do, but I won't steer you wrong. Because you can see the texture of the primer as I'm sanding. You can see the texture of the primer, and that filler is sticking in the texture of the primer. I know that's amazing, I know. But it's true. The 
This piece had a big crack in it. It was broken from here to there. I think someone tried to pry it and take it off. It has two-faced tape and it broke across there. So I just took a, a grinder and scratched it up really coarse, took a die grinder and V'd it out a little bit where the crack was, fiberglassed it with the fiberglass and the resin, and then I let it set there until that was glazed over nice. I did not take much of the fiberglass off because that was the repair, and then I put fill over top of it. And uh, it, it has stayed so far, and uh, I'm happy with it. It looks a lot better than it did before. So there was a few, quite a few pinholes and scratches on this piece because it was just 80 gridded and primed. You can see the filler staying right into the texture of the primer. I know it's hard to believe, I know. But it's the truth. I'm going to get another piece of paper. I find that the, probably should let that set a little, set it, let it set up a little bit longer for it really to, so it doesn't collect in the paper. But we're going for it. Cross it just like you would do your body fill work. You want to go every which way and make sure everything's feathered out nice. Don't want to do that with a block. I'll probably end up burning it off. So I'll do it by hand. So you can see the pinhole filled there. You can see how the filler is right in the pinhole there. You can see how the filler is right in the texture of what's going on there. You can see the pinhole that's filled, all the pinholes that are filled, pinhole filled, pinhole, pinhole that's filled, pinhole that's filled. And it's all at a good playing field where I can guide coat it. I would say that's fixed. I would, but I have all. So I just continue on. They're still damp. We've got a wet day out, so. With these ones on the hood, I see I got a few more there up there. I got a few more scratches here. If you want to come take a look, sweetheart. It's not scratches, what it is where it's checked. It's quite, quite something else. So I'll have to put a little filler in that. We'll do that a little bit more. Basically, the ones on the hood, I'll probably end up doing with the DA, with the, just the DA, just hold it flat, nice and just nice and easy. Uh, yeah. Any place you don't want to get filler on when you're doing something like this, just put a little tape beside it. Well, there you, when you, when you go to get a take or go to fill it, you don't get fill on anything. I got, when I pull that tape off, there'll be no fill on top of the fender or the light because I took my time and, and uh, put a little tape on it. It doesn't take much time, but it just, you just have to recall, that's all. So after you prime, make sure you go around and Look at all the spots on your car. Basic spot is right there. I got filler run out there, I know. That's why I'm taking it off. But. Trying to stay on top of the filler. I want all the primer on the bumper that I can have.
going this way on the filler, I'm feathering it off. Going this way, I'm sanding it off. There's two different things going on there. I start going this way on it, I'll be, I'll be tearing the sand, trying to rip the, the, the filler off the primer. Going this way on it, I am feathering it off. I want to feather it all off so it runs off like you so you can't even see it. That's what I want. If you want to take something off, if, you're in, you know, if you want to take some off it, go this way. So after this, me and Julian are going to go get our battery out of the car. We're going to run it to town and uh, see if we can't get another one. The 220 sanding Z grip. Trying to get a big chip that was on the edge of that bumper where it meets the fender. Kind of puckered up after we primed it. And that's okay. I'd rather have it pucker up after we prime it than after we paint it. Isn't that right, baby? Mm -hmm. I'll pucker up for you anytime. Alrighty, got a little filler I'm gonna take off here. Just be careful. I want to go get an X-Acto knife. Have one. They're all put away. I'm going to see if I can cut that in between there and start to try to sand it. Behave yourself. <sighs> I didn't want that like that. But. Take your time on stuff like that. You can go backwards very easily. But take your time. <sighs> I don't want to leave no ledge. Make sure. Beautiful you are, Joey. No more chip there, all gone. Basically, that's what we'll do to the whole thing. We're going to do the whole thing. I'm going to grab a DA and show you how I do it with the DA. Uh, why not? I got the pads over here. And you have to be careful. Take your time. It's you know, it's not for uh, what can I say? It may not be for everybody, 
but I grab a DA and do it quite a bit where I can. Where is the DA? Right underneath here. I have a pad on there now. And to take these pads off, if you want to take them off without getting sticky stuff all over your DA, use the heat gun. And these ones come off pretty decent. So I'm going to do one on the hood, or a couple on the hood there to show you how I do that. When you're doing this with a DA and you're trying to take off just small areas with you know, minimal amounts of filler or putty or whatever, you want to hold it flat just like you're doing your block. And also you want it at a, a slow speed. You, know, you don't want it at a ramrod speed because it's not going to work out for you. Using this thing just like a block, holding it flat. This hood's not in that great a shape, and there might be more work to this hood than, than I'm doing right now. Just as if I was using a block, exactly how I'm doing it. Just crossing it back and forth, not keeping it in one spot, and holding it flat. It may jump around on you a little bit, but hold on to it. Hold on, man. You can see where I've filled the scratches on that, and that's with filler. That's, that's, that's so fine, that's orange. You can see the orange peel in the primer. You can see the filler staying in the orange peel of the primer. That's how good that is. That's good. But we want it to come like this. But when we, when we seal it, it'll be like that because we can see that it's flat. Let's go back over here a little bit. I'll take this one off. Hold it flat. Do not go fast. If you go fast, you're going to ruin it. Hold it flat like you would a block. Take a look. You can see where the, all the cracking is. That's how basic that is. I can get this one here because it's above the light. I got basically what I'm going for and it's, it's not bad if you take your time um, with the DA it's, it's not bad you can you can make boo-boos because it is fast hold it flat make sure at all times turn the speed down have to pay attention when you're doing it pay you got to pay attention this is feathered off on this side that's not feathered off on that side because you can see that hard ledge but I can see a soft edge going this area where it's feathered on that side so I have to when I'm rubbing over here I have to make sure I try to get on this side more than this side it's got a hard ledge going over here it's kind of feathered off over here so you really have to pay attention what's going on Hold it flat. There's our spot. There's, our, there's one of our spots. And I'm saying that that's low, eh, a little bit high there. There's our spot. Not going any further. There's our spot. 
And that's what I'm going to do to all the little low spots. I will not, well, you'll see in the end, I'll show you actually, you come back tomorrow and we'll do it again. Um, I'm going to take all these spots off. Um, we're going to put it in a guide coat and I'll show you what a guide coat is so you can do it on your car. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spray bomb and just mist it. Or you can use base, you can use anything that's a fast dry. Uh, you do not want anything that's going to clog up your paper. You can buy a, a guide coat, it's just a probably base that's mixed up thin. Uh, leftover base and some thinner, just spray it on nice and thin. Just fog it on and then when you sand your car off then you can see that there's any imperfections. I want to fix these imperfections before I get to doing the guide coat because I want to paint it after I'm done sanding it. Um, right now I want to get I want to get I want to get the filler off or fix all the little picks before I get started. Trying to get in there, my get away from there. Hard to hold it flat on this because this is not flat. It's kind of dipped in. You can see them down there already. I've just done it for a while. I know what to do and what not to do, but. Basically, this has got a, like a dip going on in there. It's got some cracks in there. I'm not going to put a bunch of filler in there to smooth that off. That's not what we're doing. We're doing a paint job. ocean floor is the red paint. You can see I'm hitting the ocean floor. The ocean floor is the red paint, so I really have to be careful. Alrighty, everybody, that's how I do it. I primed it. Now I'm going over all the places that are, don't look good, that have any pinholes or have paint that's picked off or have picks. Even if you have, if you're, if you're looking at your car and uh, you see a, a wavy spot in it or you see a body line that doesn't look right, put some filler on it straighten it out a little bit and then when you go next time then you can put a little primer or, or whatever you want on it but i find it's it's good like when you're doing jobs like this all over 40 80 get it in primer see what you got put a little filler on places that you don't like or whatever and then sand from there but on this paint job here i'm just going to try to get all the little picks with the filler and then before uh, we paint this car we will seal it all one color and then paint it. So we're not painting over top of the of the body fill. We're not going to do that. Um, that's that that's a no-no. We're going to paint over the sealer that we use um, once we get it all one color. But um, these are the places that I've missed. This is what I'm doing to fix it. You can do the exact same thing, or you can do it your way. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just showing you my way, so you can take it, leave it, throw it away, love it, whatever you want to do with it. Does not matter. But. Uh, that's what I do to try to get the best job that I can. Just want to take a little more off that. And we have to remember this is a, I'm not sure what kind of, what kind of car this is, a urethane or a plastic or whatever it is, but the panels are not going to be perfectly straight. Like this, this front bumper's got a, quite a dip in it going on here. That's fine by me. Um, once it's painted, it'll look fine. Um, it look fine because that's what it is. It's a plastic bumper. Any new car would have something going on like that. So um, basically, I'm okay with it on this car. Everything's going okay. There's no rust in this car. It's just just fixing the, the panels that are on it. It had poor adhesion of paint from prior jobs, and uh, we we've buff, just buffed it all off the best we could, and then we put it in primer. Now where it's in primer, I am going back over it and trying to get all the little tiny things that we do not like because you can see them in the primer. 
And uh, that's what I suggest. That's what we're doing. I've given all the places that had the bad, like the work, like on the roof here, had a bunch of work done to it, a bunch of work done on that side of the roof. We fixed this panel here. Um, wherever the work was done, I give the most primer. And uh, we only had so much primer, and that's what I use. We're doing the basic paint job uh, to make Tim happy. And uh, this is a freebie, so hope he likes it. See you tomorrow, everybody.